Welcome to V Rising, a game where you're a vampire that's awoken to find the world overtaken by monsters and holy people. I have 100 days to restore the food chain and put vampires back on top. In order to do so, I'll need to rebuild a castle fit for a vampire, hunt down servants that will quench my thirst, and defeat the false pretenders that think they are on top. Will I be able to accomplish this in 100 days? Let's find out. So, it began with me creating my very own vampire. Now, instead of me going for the regal look, I decided to go for the most horrifying look that I could possibly find. And I think I settled on that pretty well. Although, I did need to name my dude, and we decided to call him Count Succula. Once awakening, it was time to overthrow this world's rulers and take it for myself. All I needed to do was defeat a whole host of very strong bosses and enemies. So I found myself out in the mausoleum, starting off with some very basic skeletons. Obviously, these guys aren't very strong. However, I was subjecting myself to some sunlight because there's nothing a vampire enjoys more than basking in the beautiful sunlight. I managed to make myself my first set of equipment and I left for the main world. As the mausoleum is kind of the tutorial area, now, once I entered into the main world, I decided to start hacking and slashing, getting into here and taking out some more skeletons. So I still had to craft myself a couple of extra things. Before that, I needed some rugged hide, which thankfully you can find on the backs of these wolves located through the Fairbane Woods. So I got to work on harvesting up them and sucking their blood dry. I found a bandit camp and decided to test out my new weaponry just to see what kind of damage I could deal, as well as feed on some of the local militia. After completing the goals, I then received a new goal. Now, this game does have a goal tier system where you have to complete certain things and that will allow you to unlock more powerful blueprints. So, I had to place a castle heart, which is responsible for where you set up your base. It's essentially your command point. So, you can build around the castle heart and then you can build your massive vampire castle. Now, I did have to build some moors as well just to complete the following missions. I also built a sawmill so I could refine some of these logs that I received down into planks. I also built a workbench. This will allow us to craft stronger weapons as well as stronger armor when I eventually got around to the copper tier. But I did make myself some stronger armor and I also made myself some reinforced bone weaponry as well. This is going to allow us to increase our equipment level which is going to make us stronger in order to take on the V-Bloods, which are the bosses found throughout this game, and killing them allows us to get more powers. So I found the Alpha Wolf first, and he was going to be our first V-Blood challenge to defeat. Thankfully, I did manage to get him to half health without too much of a struggle when some hunters decided to come along and give me a helping hand. So I let the Alpha Wolf deal with them while I kept hitting him from the back, and we got our first V-Blood. Now, killing the Alpha Wolf was going to allow us to transform into a Dire Wolf. These guys were sick, they gave us extra movement speed, a howl, and the ability to jump through structures. I then made my way to the Bandit Logging Camp to take on Quincy, and he was going to allow us to unlock extra structures for our base. He was also a pretty easy fight, these easier, the beginner bosses are kind of easier, although when you are sort of low equipment level, they're also a bit of a struggle, but if you do know the boss's move patterns, they are very easy to defeat. I did get in a bit of a tussle here where I managed to attract all the attention of the camp and had to deal with them. I almost lost my life in the process of this. As you can see, they were all starting to swarm me. I was a little concerned for my safety there. Thankfully, I did manage to clear all of them out and that just left us with the V-Blood left. And he was a couple strikes off killing and just like that, we managed to get our second V-Blood within a matter of two days. We were doing great. Rufus was defeated, that gave us the crossbow and the fishing rod. I then spent the next morning trying to figure out a different base spot as I was really not happy with my location. After wandering around for a bit, I did find a new location, set up my new castle heart and a couple of floors around it, and then I got to work at putting up some extra structures. Some storage chests so we could store our items, as well as some walls. I then went ahead and put our refining stations, so a sawmill, our smithy, and then a furnace or forge as well. I also placed a research desk. This will allow us to unlock extra research as well. It was then time to get to my next V-Blood. However, I needed to clear out the camp that she was stationed in and it almost cost me my life. But we did eventually find Keely the Frost Archer and I did wait till nighttime to fight her as the sunlight was more than likely going to burn my face off. 
and it's just an extra hassle that we have to deal with while already dealing with a V blood that has the ability to freeze us. Thankfully though, I had studied Keely's attack patterns before and she was relatively easy to fight. I did take a little bit of damage here and there, especially getting frozen solid, but it wasn't really anything too crazy and I was able to make quick work of Keely alongside of the extra wolves that she decided to spawn in. Not spawn in, sorry, they broke in from their broke out from their cages. So that bought me some valuable time to heal myself. And with that, I was then able to counter one of her blows and strike her down and siphon all of her blood. This gave us some new abilities as well as the tannery and the ability to make leather. So I spent the rest of the night harvesting up some copper ore and other resources so that I could refine them at my forge. Then it was time to face Errol the Stonebreaker. Now this guy was located in the copper mine. He also was a pretty easy fight because I have fought Errol before. So it was just a matter of defeating his minions, dodging his uh, big chaos attacks that he smashes on the ground like that one there. Once you dodge that, it's all a matter of just striking him down. So we siphoned off his blood, picked up a new schematic, and then harvested up the rest of the copper located throughout the mines. Now, the blueprint that we found is for the forge flooring, and this is a great blueprint. It'll become a bit more obvious throughout the video what this is for, and I'll explain it then. I then returned to base and placed my new tannery down and put some rugged hide in there so I could start making some leather in order to upgrade my gear. I also made some copper weaponry, and these were going to be much stronger than our reinforced bone and provide us an extra gear level. I also made a new ring which would increase my sorcery level and with the leather that I had crafted up I then went ahead and made that into the next tier of armor as well. Then it was time for the next V-Blood. Now these undead sorcerer dudes are always a pain in the ass because they just swarm you with mobs and it is such an un I mean it's not an unpleasant experience but it's a massive pain in the ass. Luckily I had defeated Errol and he had granted me his ability for the Chaos Rift which is the big explosion and this is great for defeating mobs. Now unfortunately I was not able to defeat this guy and he just had too many mobs and I did die. However that death did not dissuade me and back into the fold I went to try and defeat this guy. Now for those of you that are wondering what happens when you die, essentially what happens is your gear has durability. When you die, your gear suffers a 10% durability loss. So if you die enough times, you will have to repair your gear and get that fixed up in the process, otherwise you lose everything. Thankfully, however, I didn't have to worry about my equipment degrading anymore as I was able to finally defeat this guy and extract his V-blood. Now, I then went ahead and decided to make my way to the next V-Blood. I was on a bit of a roll this night, and I figured, you know what, I could probably take him. I'm at that stage where I feel like I could do enough damage, but first I had to break through all of his guards. However, there were just way too many of them for me, and I was already low health, and unfortunately I died. So, looks like my equipment was going to be degrading after all. But I did manage to defeat the thieves and the various warriors that were still there and reclaim my body. But before I could do that, I needed to go ahead and suck this sucker dry. This was a 100% warrior blood and I needed that. I just wish that I had access to make it my slave so that I could take it back to my base. Unfortunately, however, I did just have to settle for using the 100% warrior blood. It was then time to face Grayson the Armorer. Now, this is where the boss mechanics of V Rising were starting to kick into place. Now, Grayson had a pretty cool ability where he'd throw pretty much caltrops all over the arena. And you had to make yourself invulnerable using the armor stands. Pretty much walk over the caltrops to disable them. Otherwise, you'd get stuck in them, take damage, and Grayson would be able to absolutely shred you. So, pretty cool mechanics coming into play here. Thankfully, I did know what to do against him, so it wasn't too difficult. I did manage to get him down to half health pretty quickly. Due to the fact that we were using copper weapons, we also had access to our weapon skills now, our first set anyway. So we could pair those with our spells and take out Grayson pretty dang easily, and we managed to get him on the first try. Super happy about that. We got the ability for an extra shield as well as some structures and the ability to make whetstones. So I went back to base, built myself up a grinder and got to work at grinding out some stone bricks and some whetstones. Grabbed the research that I had learned, the Merciless Copper Sphere, and this was going to enable us to get into the iron tier of things. Then it was time to face Lydia, the Chaos Archer. Now, her name does kind of sound terrifying, but in all honesty, she's kind of a pushover. I have fought her before, so I do know how to take her and dodge most of her abilities. So she was a pretty easy fight. The only thing that we really had to watch out for was her Chaos stuff that she leaves behind. 
as that does deal magic damage over time. But I was able to dispose of her pretty quickly. You can see here she's launching a final volley against us that was completely unnecessary and not worth the time. And we were able to hit her while cloaked and extract her V-Blood. She gave us the ability for Chaos Volley as well as the Devourer. I then went back to base once again, gaining more research in the process for some walls as well as some extra armor pieces. And then it was time to make myself Merciless Copper Spear and the upgraded armor. And then I needed to face the bear. Now, obviously, defeating the bear was going to give us access to the bear form. However, I have always struggled with this fight. The bear is a very tough opponent, and he did manage to get the better of me with his upgraded attacks. Once he does go into his second phase, he does get access to a charge, and his attacks are generally more uh, speedy. So you do have to sort of dodge here and there. We did get close on our first attempt, but he was able to down us. Nonetheless, though, that didn't stop us from returning and absolutely demolishing him this time around. You have to time your dodges very particularly, and you also have to time when you actually use your dodge instead of just walking. It's a very tricky, fine line to stand on, but thankfully we were able to defeat the bear and gain access to our bear form. Now, with our bear form, we were able to destroy large boulders as well as mine resources rather easily. Mm, yeah, this is going to be clutch for coming in and fixing up our current there, base spot where there was a large deposit of stone nearby and copper. I thankfully was able to destroy that as well as all the other nodes and I just gave our howl a bit of a run. I then decided to go ahead and start setting out our foundation. Our current goal was to set up a room and for that you need walls up and running, but we obviously needed to grind those down in the grinder. I did build up a singular room of my castle, which I was super happy about, and I was able to claim my quest reward and move on to the next quest, which was the Waygate. This would allow us to teleport in between our current Waygate and all Waygates around the map that we found, which is going to be great for getting around the map. I also went ahead and put down a blood press as well, and I wanted to try out the new stairs, so I put some of those down and the alchemy lab. I also wanted to take a quick look at my drip because we had the Plague Master's Mask. The next night, I continued with my quests, and I needed to place a stone coffin. However, for that, I needed amethysts. Idiot me had decided to grind down all my amethysts into gem dust for something else. So I needed to go out and try and find some amethysts from all the gem rocks. Hallelujah. Oh my god, finally. After gathering the amethyst gems, I then returned back to base to casually stand in the sun and burn myself to a crisp. Because idiot me had decided to alt tab and do something else. And not only was I dumb enough to get burnt, I then decided to, instead of going into a normal room, stand next to my staircases which provide minimal shadows. This enabled me to die in the process. However, I then activated my bone altar, stuck some extra chests down, stuck my own coffin down so that I could now respawn back at my base, claimed that, and that allowed me to get the servants' coffins. Now I could get my own servants for the castle, and I made my first coffin. After that, I then received the Dominate Human, and I ventured out to find myself my very first slave. Now, I had found a couple of guys out here in this camp, and I found myself a warrior thug. He ain't killing us today. Did it work? No. Nope. Let's try again. This should get him this time because I think they have to be under 30% health. And then he's just going to go for a leisurely stroll back to our base. I believe he's under our control. Let's go, big fella. Don't you get in any fights. I don't know. We're going to put him in the coffin. And we're going to see if that works. Let's do it. Here we go. Convert. I think we have to wait for it to finish converting. So let's do that and then... How do I get out of this? Perfect timing. Look at that. We've got George. Uh, let's go Seymour. Arise, new servant. Seymour the servant. Where'd he go? Oh yeah, you look terrifying, man. You look like you could do some damage. How do I interact with him? Servant inventory? Is that it? Expertise, gear level, hunt proficiency, power, max health. Normal condition. All right. Now what? Command your servants from the castle throne. Ooh, I do like the sound of a throne. Now, I couldn't build the throne just yet, so you know what time it is? Time for more V-Bloods. And this time it was Clive, the fire starter. Now, this guy would give us access to refining sulfur in our forge, but we had to defeat him first, and unfortunately he was able to defeat us with all his goons. However, I ki killed all his goons and returned back to fight him. 
one-on-one, -on -one, macho, el macho, man-to-man, -man, and, well, we kind of dominated him this time. It was just a matter of dodging his firebomb attacks, and I also got some help in clearing out the sulfur encampments nearby. As he was uh, throwing bombs and everything everywhere, we could use him to destroy any of the rocks nearby, allowing us to gather up the corresponding resources. And just like that, Clive did go down, not before he tried suiciding, bombing me, and killing me with two of his explosions. But it didn't really take us much from this point forward, and we were able to thrust him with some spears and throw some spells at him. And just like that, he was able to go down, and we could feast on his V-Blood. After defeating Clive, I made my way up to Polara, the face stalker, as she was on the same side of the map. Now, Polara was going to give us access to gardens, essentially. However, I wasn't the smartest of cookies and decided to try and fight her during the day, which ultimately ended in my oh. downfall, as you can see. Not my greatest decision. I did return during the night, however, and did bombard her with my spear and my spells. Uh, all you had to do really for Polara was dodge her, well, I mean, you could do that for every enemy, dodge her attacks, but she did fire out like wisps and spirit wolves that would sort of hunt you down and go in a line. So you needed to dodge those and also dodge the little summonings that she brought in with like little butterflies that also fired these uh, wisp orbs at you. I did need to heal quite a few times. Thankfully, there was this rock nearby where I was able to go behind a couple of times and actually heal up a little bit of health as I didn't really have a lot of potions on me. But thankfully, I was able to defeat Polara and I could finally build myself my own garden. I also got the ability to summon a spectral wolf. Jesus Christ. That seemed extremely uncalled for. The next few nights were filled with slaying V-Bloods. I was at that stage of progression where I needed to start killing these guys in order to get my better weaponry and my better armor. I did need higher tier iron weapons as well as more merciless copper weapons. I did however have my Kerpus Spear which would enable me to get iron when I eventually was able to reach that area. But first I had to deal with this guy. Now, this guy just spawns tons and tons of mobs. Thankfully, I did have my Chaos Rift ability and I was cutting it close. Oh man, that was so close. Holy smokes, was that freaking close. This should kill all these skeletons around us, I'm hoping. Oh my God, talk about clutch. That was so freaking close. Oh my. It was then time to face Quincy the Bandit King. Here we go guys, Ban Quincy the Bandit King. Now, this guy will allow us to unlock iron once I kill him. I think we should be all right to kill him. Whoa, okay, that was a big attack. I'm debating whether or not I want to try and kill these little archer friends. What have you got, Quincy? You're on half health, mate. Here we go! Let's suck his blood dry. By defeating Quincy, I got iron and an ultimate ability, as well as the next tier of armor. Then I had to face Tristan, the Vampire Hunter. Now, by defeating Tristan, I would gain access to great swords and be able to use them as weapons. So all I had to do was defeat this guy that hunted us for a living. Nothing too difficult, right? Well, it took way too many attempts for me to feel comfortable about and defeat this guy. His bomb attack just seemed to hone in on me. It was so annoying. And the burn just dealt so much damage. I was on one health and I did eventually die to a couple of guys that decided to intervene and get involved in the fight. It was then finally time for a proper rematch. We were both super low, all I had to do was keep whittling him down with my spells, making sure that I dodged his attacks and his firebomb attacks. I popped my ultimate ability off and he launched his cocktail molotov at me, and I hit him with the final chaos volley. Man, that was so freaking close. Round three and we managed to finally get the bastard. After defeating Tristan, I stopped by the marketplace just to get some extra research that I hadn't already unlocked, as you can now buy it from the traders in these areas. I went ahead, went back to base, and put those back into my research desk so that I could learn all of the floor. I'm in trouble. I then made my way to I'm the Iron trouble. Mine, where there are actually I just wanted two some more. bloods in this area. The Sun Archer and the Death Knight. Now, you can actually get these guys to fight each other, but for that to happen, the timing has to be perfect. For my luck, I didn't get the timing right, and unfortunately had to dodge the Sun Archer as she was going to find me while I was mining my iron.
I just wanted some iron ore. I'm getting this merit of the bright archer. What am I gonna do? I think he gives us size if we kill him. Let's try and kill him. Oh god. Yep. All right. He seems powerful. Well, that went well. After dying twice in the iron mines, I just returned simply to harvest up a bunch of iron ore. I was going to need it so I could make my iron ingots when, lo and behold, Meredith and Krieg decided to engage each other. Now, Krieg is actually slightly stronger in my opinion than Meredith, but I figured I'd make my presence known and decide to get involved in the tussle. Now, Meredith was targeting me, Krieg was targeting Meredith. It was a jolly old good time. And uh, as you can see, Meredith was also super low. Krieg was casting spells. I had to be careful here as I did get hit by both of their AoEs. So I backed up a little bit, waiting for them to continue taking each other out. Krieg did get Meredith low. All I needed to do was make sure that I got the killing blow on Meredith so that I could harvest her V-Blood. Let's go. Let's do it. I think we can get both of them here. <laughs> He's still got that much health. I reckon I can kill him. We've got health orbs around us. I'm thinking we should be all right. Free uh, V blood extract. I'll take it. Merciless iron crossbow as well. Awesome. Next level of upgrades. I just need to make sure I kill him. So I kind of can't throw this in the bag. I'm going to be careful here. I'm going to charge him. Oh, bad idea. Let's go. We can kill him too, I reckon. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> that worked out so well. Keely and this dude. Oh, Krieg, the Undead General. Thank you, mate, for saving us the hassle of killing us. After defeating Krieg, we got one of the best spells in the game, Ward of the Damned. Now, we also killed Meredith the Bright Archer, and she gave us another dash, as well as a resistance potion to Holy. I was pretty happy about that. So by gathering all that iron, I was able to make my first iron weapons. The Great Sword, the Reaper, and the Crossbow. I'd also spent some time turning certain areas of my castle into the respective rooms, this being the forge room, getting a reduction cost for things. I then went ahead and tested out the new weapon skills for each of the weapons, as I hadn't had a chance to actually use these yet. Greatsword allowed us to jump into the air as well as do a charge attack, and the Reaper, aka the Scythe, allowed us to do an area of effect spin attack, which would knock enemies away, as well as a Beyblade attack, I guess you could call it. That's probably the best way to describe it, where you'd throw your scythe and it would spin in a certain location. Then it was time to face Beatrice the Tailor. Doesn't even fight, that's hilarious. Beatrice, come back here. Sorry, Beatrice. Your blood is now mine. You're dead now, I'm, so I'm not sorry. After the death of Beatrice, one of the easiest fights, I then found myself in another V-Bloods location. And we were here, I figured, why the hell not? So I went to work on defeating this new V-Blood. Now, Beatrice was obviously, honestly one of the easiest V-Bloods we had faced so far. This one was a little bit more difficult, but she mainly just spawned in mobs that we had to defeat along the way. She wasn't too bad. It did become nighttime, however, while I was fighting her, and that was when I was able to get the killing blow on her. Finding her during the day in the cathedral wasn't too hard, and I was able to extract her V-Blood. We're in trouble. I knew the moment that guy came in, I was dead. He's 54. What is he doing out here? Go away. However, not one to shy away from a fight, I decided to return and face this guy one more time. He was slightly stronger in a power level, but that did not stop me from absolutely beating his Frozone ass off the face of this planet and allowing ourselves to suck his blood dry in the process. This allowed me to get the reinforced plank item. I then made my way to try and take on the V-Blood that would give us the study, which would enable us to get new research items, and she was difficult. Now, this is where I started switching up my spells and trying out different things because I figured this isn't going to work. You know, we were just taking a lot of damage. Now, I also found a village up here in the north and thought nothing of it. You know, a couple of workers. And then it became nighttime. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. These villagers straight up turned into fucking werewolves. <laughs> Guys, I just want my body back. Oh, I've turned the whole village into freaking werewolves and my body is so close. Okay, we got our body back. One of them anyway. Don't really care too much about the other body. I just wanted to get 
our body back. And it looks like we've got a vampire way gate up here. I'm just going to take a second here to heal myself. I think they've stopped chasing me. After retrieving my body, I made my way back to my castle and made myself a tailoring bench. Now, thankfully, it was just the right size to fit in this little grove that I had sectioned off here at the back. It was then time for upgrades, starting with the castle heart. So we upgraded it to level three, expanding our servant coffins as well as our tiles. And then it was time to upgrade our equipment. I then also equipped all of our new equipment with our new tailoring bench that increased our gear level. So now we could fight hunt stronger bosses. And we took a second to admire all that beautiful, wonderful gear on myself. It was then finally time for a rematch to kill the V blood that gave us the study. Now, I did manage to get her down. I did have to swap some spells out with the wolf spell, and that allowed us to deal with the little minions that she spawned, as well as with the reaper. We were finally able to defeat her. Now, like I mentioned, the, this did allow us to unlock the study. Fuck. I then also needed to unlock the human form. And we got this by defeating this guy, the Shadow Blade. He would unlock the human form for us. It was a difficult fight. I did die twice while fighting him. However, I was able to defeat him and get human form, as well as some new weaponry, which was ancestral that I did not have access to make just yet. I would need to get the Ancestral Forge. I then needed to defeat Gretel, the Glass Blower. This would give me access to glass as well as glass bottles, which I could use on my servants to extract their blood. Now, she was a relatively easy fight. I didn't need multiple attempts to take her out. I actually got her down on the first try. She wasn't too difficult, but she was the next V-Blood that I took out. And you can see there, we did get extra potions as well. Now, I did find some servants with some high blood. Here we had a rogue with very high blood that I wanted. Now, by high blood, I mean 100%, which is the highest that you can get in this game. However, I was a little bit dumb about going about this. So, instead of walking it back to base, I decided to try and take it to a teleporter in hopes that I could teleport to base. And now, obviously, that didn't work. So, I kind of just killed it, which was a done mistake on my part. I should have just walked back to base. It was then time to face Leandra, the Shadow Priestess. Now, I had changed up my spells a little bit. I was running with a static shock ball as well as the ghost wolves. Still running with my reaper. However, she was... Uh, she was quite easy. Easy enough. You know, we had defeated her to half health, got in the health orbs. She did do this attack where she makes the entire screen dark. Uh, however, I just kind of ran towards the health orbs, grabbed those, and then defeated her when we got out of that. And uh, that gave us the Scourge Stones, which are going to be vital moving forward. Alrighty guys, so I've gone ahead and built myself a new castle all the way in the top here. I just wasn't really happy with how the other, our first one was looking. I just wasn't a big fan. So I am super happy at the moment with how this is all looking. Uh, obviously it's not complete. I still have to do a couple of extra things on it. But we've got a lot more space up here. Yes, we did have the two tiers down the bottom here. But it was all awkward shaped and I didn't like that. So now we have a nice castle going on. I've uh, got the forge upstairs. This is all going to change. On the other side, we're going to do the tailor. So on this side, we're going to do a tailor. Um, and then I'll actually probably end up splitting the forge down the middle here. Uh, having the forge on this side and then possibly having jewel crafting or something like that on this side. And then down this middle section, I'll just have a standard sort of pathway with some trees growing on it. Maybe a garden at the end as well. So, yeah, but we've also got a garden down this side of the place. We've also got all this area out here, so we're not strapped for space or anything like that. We've got a bunch of stuff growing down the side here as well. This is all going to change and eventually get uh, fancied. It's going to look a lot nicer. I am still trying to move some stuff over from the old base. However, that's just taking its sweet ass time. So, we're going to just make some potions here and then I'm going to go kill some stuff. So after rearranging the castle and changing locations, it was back to the V bosses. Now doing the castle up did take me a couple of days, so we needed to get a wriggle on. Next up, however, was the Geomancer. Now I thought she was pretty easy. She was kind of just like a DPS check in essence. She did have this cool ability of turning into a golem, which was kind of cool. Like that was pretty dope. Uh, but like I said, she was just kind of a DPS check. We were able to take her out pretty easily. That being one of the strongest blows we took the entire fight. And just like that, the Geomancer was out for the night. Next up, we then went ahead to try and take on Jade the Vampire Hunter. And well, you can see how well that went for us. So I retreated from that, got some garlic exposure done to myself because I was trying to farm up some cotton so I could make myself some upgraded armor and turned it into the cotton yarn 
that we needed for the armor. I also went to the traders just to see if there were any more books that we needed for some research that we were going to get. Obviously, you can find the flooring here, which is great for the castle because it does have extra perks for wherever you decide to uh, set up your stations and everything like that. So it's great to get the, the four floors. Blah, blah, blah. Words today. It's great to get the floors because they do provide those buffs. But next up was the holy man himself located in Dunley Monastery. I did go into human form to try and uh, sneak my way in. It did succeed. However, he did spot us at the last second and this guy... Oh my god, was he difficult. I thought I was prepared. I died to him probably about 10 times, I think, from the top of my memory. It was a lot of dying to this guy. And uh, here is a, here's a compilation of my deaths that uh, I thought I'd save you guys the trouble of having to suffer through by cutting them down drastically. So you can see here we got Cummy Cummy Hard. We got Bloody Batted Against the Wars. We got shocked by his little urn things that he summons in. They're always fun, right? Getting shocked by his urns. We got Kami Kami Hard again. I was like hiding behind the pillar to try and protect myself. Nonetheless, I had had enough for the day and decided to, you know what, let's send some servants out and just relax in our throne while our servants go out and do some work for us. Now, while the servants were our way on missions, I built up the jewel crafting room. Now, at the moment, I only had one real structure to place in here aside from like the storage, um, and that was the amulet crafting station. I did have the jewel crafting station available, I just didn't really have a use for any of the jewels there. You can see that in the corner of the jewel cutting table. Ma. And I also had access to be able to make some Ma. merciless iron stuff now. So I got that made up and we were set to go. Alright, we've got a gear level of 39. Um, well, let's see, what, if, what about when we pull out a weapon? 57. Alright, we should be on par with some of these bosses now. Hopefully we can take them out. Uh, we've got to fix these two guys up, they're just kind of chilling here. I've also got to f move the rest of my stuff over to the new base. I'm going to leave this base, this castle here, because we've still got the servants, and I don't know if you can actually move the servants from their coffins once you've put them down, so we're going to leave them here. I'll also probably get some more servants for down there, just so we can have a bunch of them going at the same time. Um, but yeah, other than that, we also need to move the tailor over, but I think other than that, everything's pretty much set for this new castle, which is great. The only uh, issue I've run into so far is... Having to round, run around all over the shop trying to get my items and everything that I need to do. But it's honestly not that bad, so it's just a little bit time consuming. We're going to take all those vials and we're going to go back into wolf form. Nope, we can't do that now because we're out of blood. So we're going to slowly die, that's fine, I don't really care. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to make some of these potions up and I also need to make a holy resistance potion as well. Perfect. So... Theory is our throne is going to probably go here in the center, so we're going to look all badass and shit. We've got our prisoners on the side here. I don't know where I'm going to put my coffin yet. I've got this empty space over here. I'm not too sure what to do with it. I feel like I could, probably could have put this into rooms and just had this blocked off, but I feel like it would have been better if I had it open so we could still go out. All right, let's go out and we're going to go do some hunting, I think. Now, on the way back to the Holy Man, we found the Ice Boss again. I can't remember his name, but we also found a 92% Rogue. And I needed to dominate that little sucker and get him back to base. It was a challenge, though, with this guy constantly trying to kill me. Luckily, I was able to get my stone off in time and get him sent back to base. All right, here we go. Time to do this again. Honestly, I'm kind of swaying towards using the uh, the crossbow, but it looks like if we close the distance between him, he struggles to kind of hit us. Oh, this is bad. Okay, here we go. Oh, thank God. We're so close to dead. Let's get him. Oh, man, that was intense. Woo! And after defeating him, I managed to find a 76% Scholar Blood out here in the courtyard. And we were able to get that back to base as well, which is great. And I also grabbed another warrior while I was out here as well. The next night, it was time for Octavian, the Militia Captain. Now, I had never faced this guy before, so I genuinely had no idea what the hell his moveset was. And as you can see from here, it, it got a little intense. He was super low health, however, and I was like, surely, surely we should be able to defeat this guy. Well, 
how bloody wrong I was. He does summon in little bow dudes and he finished us off with a final thrust and I was downed. We were so close to killing him. Now, this happened a couple more times, well, unfortunately, we where I died in the process of fighting him. However, this attempt was slightly different. He did manage to get the knockoff on me and kill me, but at the same time, I also managed to kill him. It was a double whammy of a strike. Whether or not he would stay down remains to be seen. Oh, that's so annoying. Oh, he's still down. Is he still down? <gasps> oh, beautiful. We can still feed on him. Let's go. After defeating Octavian, it was time to face Jade the Vampire Hunter again. Now, the main reason why I wanted to kill Jade was because she would give us the ability to wield guns. Now, I had read as well that guns are one of the best weapons you can use due to the fact that they have an extra dodge on their ability. However, Jade made very quick work of me throwing out caltrops, throwing out explosives that just absolutely decimated me. So, it was crazy. She also had a lot of minions. However, the second time we proved unlucky, the third time, however, we had mastered her attack patterns and figured out exactly how she moved. Well, okay, maybe I'm lying about that last little bit, but it doesn't matter because I managed to defeat her, proving that the crossbow is superior to her guns, as well as a little bit of vampire magic just to get us through the day as well. And just like that, we were able to defeat Jade the Vampire Hunter and claim the guns for ourselves. We also gained another ultimate ability and some extra blood magic. So as my gear was slowly in decline and about to break, I figured, you know what, let's go ahead and try and take on Frostmore the Mountain Terror. Now this guy's located in the ice biome, so we hadn't actually been here before. Uh, and this guy was quite a bit of a challenge. He had quite a few area of effect attacks and he also had frost. Now, frost works in this game by pretty much you get frozen, but you also gain a shield when you get frozen. So it's kind of like extra armor that you can sort of tank a little bit. You're just, in, you're just stuck there. You just can't move. So he did manage to lower us blow and kill us the first time, but we returned back with a vengeance ready to take this guy on. Now, I did take a different dash, and idiot me just there dashed right back into his attack. I know, I'm so dumb. But I also took a barrier, which I figured would be able to help me block some of his damage and allow us to survive for a little bit longer. That paired with the crossbow meant I could pretty much attack this guy from range and mitigate most of the damage he would do to us. So, it was a slow and tedious fight, but eventually I did manage to bring Frostmore down to the ground. Now, defeating Frostmore also gave us additional pockets that we could make, which would allow us to hold more gems, coins, plants, and I believe books as well. So, he was a pretty fun fight, though. Oh, we downed him. I was like, where'd he go? Let's go. We got him. I don't know how that last blow got him, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Let's go. Woo! So we've got ourselves our tailoring room and our library now. Tailoring room's still a work in progress. I'm going to need to obviously put the flooring down. Uh, and I also went ahead and made up the jewel crafting table, which allows us to craft any of the jewels that we want. I do want to get the jewel crafter's floor though before I go ahead and do that. Um, so right now we're going to go hunt for Ziva the Engineer, which will give us the things that we need in order to upgrade our castle hut to level 4, I believe. The radium alloys, yes. Well, this is going to be very interesting. I have no idea how this is going to go, but I'm hoping that it goes okay-ish. Well, <laughs> here goes nothing. I'm shitting my pants a little bit. Let's go. Oh god, this looks scary. I don't know if I can take that bloody energy ball out. I might have to use like a skill to get rid of it possibly. Let's use my T skill. Oh shit, that does damage. And after a heck of a slug of a fight, I slowly managed to get her down to pretty much dead. She did have the ability to fly, so we kind of couldn't attack her. And she also dropped bombs and fired electricity balls at us. So there wasn't much we could do. Now, when she also came down, she did a big crash attack. But that also stunned her. So that was when we were able to get most of our damage in. And to finish her off, I hit her with our ultimate move. Got her. Woo! That was a tough fight. 
These fights are going to get tougher. I'm going to have to switch things up, but that was a good fight. Woo! Now, after defeating Ziva, I then went Mark. back to my base to try and use up some of these scrolls. Mark. You can see here, I was still missing a lot of research, but if you have 75 scrolls, you can discover research that you don't have. So we got a couple of castle decorations, and then I made my way back out to Domina the Blade Dancer. Now, these guys are all part of the new Gloomrot expansion. So I, I hadn't faced these guys ever before. I had no idea what any of them did. Ziva was difficult. Demina, not too bad either, though, to be honest. She did have quite a few different attacks, but we did manage to kill her on the first time like we did with Ziva. Uh, I feel like the crossbow is like the goat weapon. Any of the ranged weapons are just super good. Obviously, the Reaper and the pistols and the greatsword are also good. We did actually use those quite a bit, but I feel like the crossbow and the pistols is really where it's at. So, Demina did have quite a few tricks up her sleeve. Uh, she did fire a barrage of electronic bolts at us. But thankfully, there were lots of houses nearby that I could duck and hide in cover. And uh, it also became daytime. So I did also have to try and fight her in the shade of the clouds and stuff like that as they were going over. It was a bit of a difficult fight for me with this section happening anyway, because it was daytime and we were kind of struggling. Thankfully, with the inclusion of the houses and everything, I was able to heal and dodge most of her abilities as well. And eventually, she went down to us as well. Another Gloomrot boss taken out. Next up was Angram the Purifier. Now, this guy was in a super difficult area. You can see the murky, swampy waters around here. These would spawn mutants, and it would just be a barrage of mobs and his minions just trying to absolutely destroy us. That paired with the fact that he's able to throw out these Chaos Blasts on the floor as well, just made it really hard to dodge the area and the space that we were fighting him in. Luckily, however, I did find a little bit of a blind spot for myself where I could actually heal on this bridge and he wouldn't reset because his entire zone was around this whole area and meant that I didn't have to worry about him resetting his health. So he also had a front-facing barrier and a back-facing ba barrier where he would block any of the attacks in that direction. He was a super tough boss, but we were able to defeat him as well by once again utilizing the crossbow and all my various spells. It was then time to enter the Cursed Forest. Now, the Cursed Forest has a curse where once you hit 100% of the curse, your map becomes clouded and you can't see with your minimap. In order to mitigate that, you have to defeat this V-Blood here. Now, honestly, this guy had to have been the most annoying, frustrating boss in the entire game for me. So, in order to get the Curse Forest Curse lifted off, you need to defeat this guy. He gives you a shroud that you wear that prevents the curse from stacking up. Only downside is, he runs through the entire forest, gathering every single mob that you could possibly find, including other V-Bloods. There are so many monsters, so many animals, and everything. Now, alongside the curse as well, if you lose vision of him, he will reset if he gets too far away from you. And you can see just the amount of monsters that he brings while going through the forest. I had to have killed this guy, about, tried to kill this guy about 20 times. You saw there a couple of deaths. They were only a few of the ones that happened. But finally, I was able to catch up to him. You can see what I mean? Look, he just vanishes into thin air. Thankfully, I was able to catch up to him and finally struck him low in order to gain his cloak so that I could navigate the cursed forest. Now, after defeating all of the Gloomrot bosses, it was finally time for some upgrades. I had unlocked the Merciless Pistols and some extra research, and I also built myself a new throne in the new castle. I hadn't actually built myself a coffin either at this new place. It was still at the old place. And then I went ahead and upgraded the Castle Heart. Sweet. Upgraded Castle Heart. Let's do it. Let's go. We've got 250 floors now, and... <laughs> Nine seven coffins and I'm only using one. Oh, that feels bad. I do have some stones here. We've got some uh, prison cells if we do find something decent, but let's claim that. Dominate mount. So subdue a horse using dominate mount. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's go and do that, I suppose. Where's the closest place for us that has a horse? Alrighty, I think this is the mount I'm going to take. I have no idea how this mode works. Into a t an internal companion. Cool, let's do it. You're mine now, Jose. Ooh. Yo, that's a terrifying looking horse. I'm kind of glad I picked the black one. I don't, I don't know if the white ones come out like this, but this black one looks dope. All right, sweet. We've got the ancestral forge now. We should be able to make weapons. 
Insert a shattered weapon to reforge. So I should have a bunch of shattered weapons downstairs. Actually, I've got some here. Glimmering, broadsword, valiant arming sword, wicked decapitator. So they're long swords there. That's a great sword. I think I've got more downstairs. I kind of want to make some pistols and see if pistols are any good. Uh, and I think I've also got a scythe down here. Now that's going to be our next upgrade. So we're going to get slightly stronger because of that. All right. So I think we're going to try and do the explosive dueling pistols first. What do we need? Oh, we actually need merciless stuff. Okay, that's annoying. Uh, let me take that out. Can I make a finishing scythe? No, because I need a merciless iron reaper. None of these I can make because I don't have any of the <laughs> merciless stuff beforehand. Uh, let's take a look at the smithy. Can I make merciless p pistols? I can. But I need iron pistols. Let's make some iron pistols and then I'm going to go ahead and make some mercy. Perfect. Look at this. Let's go. Explosive dueling pistols. So I went with these ones over the other ones because these inflict leech. They also have increased weapon attack speed and spell critical chance. So, boom, let's grab those. Uh, and these ones only had physical critical strike chance and spell life leech. So I figured this one was going to be slightly better. Now, Angora the Spider Queen was next up on our list to kill. She would give us the ability to craft silk, which is what we needed to upgrade our next tier, to get to our next tier of armor. Now, she was also a very difficult fight. Uh, in terms of, like, how it compares to, like, the Cursed Forest dude, she's... I mean, it just took us a really long time to kill her. I constantly switched around my spells trying to figure out ways that we could uh, counter her sort of thing. And you can see here she fires a huge spray of like globs of poison, which we didn't really have a counter to. So the first attempt went actually pretty well. Like we did have a, our 100% rogue blood as well, however. So that was probably also attributing to a lot of the damage we were doing. Uh, but unfortunately, she did strike us down and oh. we did have to try and re get to her now navigating the spider cave getting to her was always fun and i did eventually switch up one of my spells into uh, the ward of the dam now this is essentially a shield that you can use and block in the direction facing foot whatever you're facing uh, and what happens is when you block a projectile you have a 50 percent chance to summon in a skeleton warrior so you can see there as we block those projectiles skeleton warriors were getting spawned in behind her now the main reason you want to do this is so that you can get some of the aggro off of you now, she also left these pools of poison blood down, which just slowly sapped her. You can see that we were so close to killing her. And then I couldn't even make it back to her this time. Her little spider minions actually killed me before I even got the chance to make it back to her. There was a lot of dying against Angora, unfortunately. I just could not beat her. It took me multiple attempts across multiple days. I think I've been spent about three days here trying to just kill her. Like, three in-game days, obviously. I didn't spend that long trying to defeat her. But she was a nightmare to defeat, and she just kept killing us. So, there wasn't really too much I could do. I did switch up my R spell to another skeleton summoning spell, so that we could hopefully sort of remove the aggro from us, and she could focus on some of our skelly boys instead. Which kind of did work out in our favor. But I believe that this was the final attempt that we were able to defeat her. I did have a couple of potions this time. I utilized all the gun skills in order to try and take her down, including dodging and using the shield. And you can see here, slowly but surely, we're whittling her down. Now, the perks about the V Rising boss fights is that they don't have a time limit. So you can take as long as you want on the boss fights, as long as you don't sort of leave their area, as that will reset the boss. So, it was a hell of a fight. She also spawns in a bunch of mobs, a bunch of babies. She's the spider queen, so it does make sense. Oh, man. But, eventually, we were able to block most of her attacks. Our skelly boys helping us alongside her, and we were finally able to defeat her. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. This is to have been the most frustrating boss so far. Oh, my God. Finally. Oh, finally. I can't believe we finally got through it. Let's go. Now with the ability to make silk, things were looking up. I could finally go ahead and make the forest cloak so I could mitigate the curse. And I could make my next tier of armor as well. Which will provide us with those very useful gear levels that I needed in order to go into the silver light side of things. I also stopped by the traders to see if they had anything for me to buy. And I bought a couple of tombs. Uh, obviously research is obviously a very vital thing in this game. So I grabbed some of those. And then I went to take on Wilfred, the Werewolf Chief. 
Now, this guy was from the village that we found earlier where there were workers that turned into werewolves. He did manage to defeat him, I'm not going to say rather easily because he was a bit of a tough fight. Not as tough as some of the other bosses though. He did manage to get us down once, but after I'd learned his attack patterns, we were pretty much set to defeat him. Oh my god, it's a damn frog. To be honest, I didn't know what I was thinking when it said frog form. Like, <laughs> I didn't even think we'd be getting a frog. I mean, we'd be fighting a frog, to be completely honest. Although, so far this guy seems okay. I don't want to jinx myself. Got a bunch of minions with us that'll help us out here. Bunch of skelly boys. He also spawns little ones. That is going to be a problem. Especially when I miss every shot. Oh, we got him! Thank God, I didn't want to lose this 100% brute blood. Oh, let's go! Hallelujah! Got ourselves... Spicy, spicy toad boy. Let's go. Let's turn into a frog. What does a frog do? We're like a full-on frog. I was expecting like a little tiny one, not this guy. Leap. Okay. That's, that's cool. After feeding Toady Boy, it was time to take on File Rot, the Soul Taker. Now, this guy was going to let us craft some extra things that we needed to turn our Scourge Stones into stuff. So we'd combine this Scourge Stone with Ghost Crystal and that would give us Spectral Dust, which is what we needed in order to get the next tier of weaponry. Uh, so he wasn't too difficult. I think we actually beat him on the first try. I don't think we had too many issues with him. That paired with like our ultimate with the lightning strikes, we were able to deal with him pretty quickly. I also started using more of the damned spell source instead of like the chaos one. So that involved spawning in a bunch of skeletons essentially. Spawning in a death knight and spawning in two skeletons when we fired our bolts. That, uh, that took a lot of the pressure off of us to dodge his attacks because he would most of the time go for uh, the skelly boys instead. And he also had a bunch of mobs that he summoned in as well. So the skelly boys definitely helped in regards to that. But uh, he did have a counter attack where you can see he was doing that right here. But yeah, he was, he was pretty easy. One of the easier cursed forest bosses, if I'm being completely honest. He was, uh, yeah, not too much difficult and he pretty much went down. It was just a matter of getting the final hits in because he did keep going invisible and it also became into the day, but we were able to kill him here and now just like that. Boom, easy. Let's go, we got him. Another one down. That's all our level 60s, I believe. That's fucking nutball. Let's take him. Easy. Then, while I was still in the cursed forest nearby, I decided to take on the cursed smith. Defeating him would allow us to get the next tier of metal weapons, which was the dark silver ingots. Oh man, where do I begin with this guy? This guy was like a combination of all the worst bosses that we've previously faced in Gloomrot and the Cursed Forest. Not only did he summon in spectral weapons, he was able to control these spectral weapons and each spectral weapon had a different attack that it could do. So it was just an absolute nightmare trying to defeat this guy. And I know I've been saying that there are bosses that are super annoying and difficult. But honestly, this guy definitely up there with one of my top five, like, worst bosses to face, 100%. He just did so much damage. And I did end up switching up here uh, from the Death Knight to the actual shield one so that we could block all these orbs that uh, he spawned in, or summoned in, I guess. Unfortunately, though, on our first try, he did manage to kill us. I mean, I'm not going to say rather easy because we did do quite a bit of damage to him, but you can see the amount of chaos going on and the amount of weapons and attacks we have to dodge to try and get this guy. Mind you as well, my dodge is on like a 9 second cooldown, so it makes it very difficult to dodge all the weapon attacks coming at you at once. <sighs> he did eventually kill us though with his weapons, and I mean, it was a pretty good first try, and then we went back and continued this, and you can see here I did switch to the Shield of the Damned, but it didn't really help out too much because I did end up dying again and again. Oh, so close. I'm trying to... There's so many weapons. Ugh. 
So after failing to defeat the cursed smith, I figured I'd go out and try and get some more slaves so that I could get some higher V-Bloods. Now I did find this 76% warrior just here, which I wanted to take back to base as I didn't really have a decent warrior blood back at base. We had rogue bloods that were at 100% or 96%. But I didn't have any warriors, so I sent him back to base. I also went into the chapel where we fought the light guy because there are a bunch of scholars in here as well as it's just a huge area so you can find heaps of stuff. I defeated him again grabbing some extra uh, books and stuff like that because I could break those down for scrolls. And then I shot a bullet into this scholar. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Ooh, 97, even better. I'm going to take both of these guys because I think... It's probably worth taking both of them just so that I can have one as a slave and then one as the actual one as a slave and then one as the actual uh, blood mule sort of thing that we need. 97 is gorgeous. If we can get that to 100 through mutant gruel, that'd be great. Also, gotta make sure I don't die in the process. Oh! <gasps> No, I'm spewing. I'm so fucking dumb. I thought it was still in the other mode. Oh, fuck me. And I died to the sunlight, of course. So after losing the 100% worker blood, I decided to go back and face this guy in order to try and get some more uh, blueprints and stuff like that. Because I figured this was a good way to go about getting the scrolls that we need. Any extra research that I needed to do as well. This was a good way of going about getting all that old research. Now, I continued the farm for more slaves and servants, and I found myself with another 100% rogue. So I had to add that to the collection, of course. It was a bit of a tedious and trying time because I obviously had to dodge all of these other guys and make sure that I didn't kill him in the process as well. And thankfully, I was able to get the extra warrior as well as the extra 100% rogue. So I was pretty happy about that. That meant that I had extra blood sources as well as extra servants that I could send out on missions in order to get more loot for me. So I was pretty happy about that. I then found a 79 scholar that obviously I had to dominate and take back to base as well. So now back at the castle, I had plenty of prison cells that were full of prisoners. And to keep their health up and to keep them happy, I decided to feed them a bunch of rats. Because who doesn't love munching on a tasty rat? I could have fed them fish, but then I would have to give up my precious fish. And I didn't really want to do that. So instead, they all got a bunch of rats. Now you can see here, we've got about five cells filled up. Whatever cells I didn't fill up, I converted them to servants by placing servant customers around the castle as well. And then it was back to Cyril the Cursed Smith. Ah oh, man, this guy, he just loved to pull my heartstrings. It was a daunting project trying to kill him, trying to dodge everything. Thankfully, I did have my skeleton boys and my shield of the damned in order to back me up. But I figured that, uh, you know what? I think I needed more DPS to try and kill this guy. There was another shield ability that I could use as well, which was the frost one. And I did have a very solid gem attachment onto that as well, so that it would enable us to actually deal more damage. He killed us down this time, but I came back with a vengeance. And you can see here me using the frost shield. When I freezed or blocked his attacks, that would essentially deal a bunch of damage. But in order to get that to effect, he had to kill me a couple of times first. And you can see just how close I got to defeating this guy. I was so close on multiple times and I just could not strike the killing blow on him. It was such a tedious boss fight. I honestly think between him and the... Oh, I don't know. I think I died more to this guy than I did to the spider, to be completely honest, and the forest guy. You can see here just how many deaths there were to the cursed smith. And I couldn't really progress because I needed to kill him in order to get the dark silver weapons that I would need. So it was just a super tedious... <laughs> Look at the times I died. It was so many times, and I was so close to killing him so many times as well. It was just, it was not a fun time. I could tell you right now, I was raging behind the keyboard. I was absolutely furious. But then, it was finally time to stop messing around and kill this sucker for once. I timed my attacks and abilities perfectly to eliminate oh, him. Oh, finally, it has taken us so long to kill this guy. And we finally did it. Let's go, finally. Oh my god, that took us so fucking long. 
So after finally defeating the cursed smith, I could now mine silver ore and turn them into dark silver ingots. Now in order to do this, I had to go to the Silverlight Hills to the silver mine. However, silver burns you, so I needed to switch into my bear form in order to take reduced damage from the silver. I then started processing the silver ore, which I needed the spectral dust, and I also found a 100% rogue while out grabbing some more silver ore. So I was super ecstatic about that. This guy we were going to keep for bloods so that we didn't need to try and convert one using some mutant gruel. Now, I needed to make some more servant coffins because I wanted to get some more servants, obviously, so that I could send them out on missions in order to get resources. Because this final stretch of the game, the final tier of stuff, reads you need a lot of resources, especially gold, which you get from harvesting it in uh, the Silverlight Hills. But it's very difficult to come by. So I wanted a bunch of servants that I could send out in order to get resources for me. And then it was time to take on the Overseer of the Silver Mines. Now, this guy had ice abilities and he was super annoying. However, by fighting the dudes in the mines, you actually freed the prisoners that were in there. And they actually came out and helped you. Although in my instance, I did kind of feed on them a couple of times by accident. It was completely unintentional, however. After a grueling slog and getting frozen multiple times, I did eventually manage to defeat the Overseer as well with the help of my prisoner minions. I, I, they weren't my minions, but you know, they te technically were because without me, they wouldn't have survived. Oh, Sir Magnus fell to my abilities and we were finally able to go ahead and defeat the next tier of bosses. Now, this guy would give us the Blood Merlot amulet, which would increase our spell power. And aside from weapons, this was the next upgrade that we needed. Now, in all honesty, this guy was probably the easiest V Blood I had faced. Aside from Beatrice, but like for this tier, he was the easiest. Essentially what he would do was stand in the middle, throw blood spells at you and have his barrels fall down from the sides. He was a connoisseur of fine wine, which is why he would give us the Blood Merlot amulet. He'd also allow us to create a potion that would pretty much stop our servants getting their health drained as much. It was a blood merlot, essentially, and you would get that by harvesting up their blood. But like I said, he was a super easy boss fight, and he was also pretty entertaining because he does kind of talk and he runs across the barrels as well. So he was pretty easy to defeat, and just like that, he was downed. He also gave us a barrel disguise, which I never used. So I'd found some characters that would make some decent servants as well as any excess servants that I had better blood for and I turned them into servants. So we had a nun, we had a, another rogue, I think it was a 96 rogue and then we had another warrior as well. So these guys were going to be extra servants that we were going to wander around the castle and that we were going to send out on missions. Now the only downside to the servants is that you needed to provide them with gear unfortunately. So I had to grind up some more of that as well in order to get some basic gear for them so that I could actually send them out on these missions. And we can now make the Blood Merlot amulet, which is going to increase our spell power, which is wonderful. So we're going to give this amulet to our other guy that we've just finished outfitting. Let's go, V! 100% work. I mean, pretty much 100% worker. We just have to pray that it doesn't get turned into a mutant when I feed it some gruel. So he's hoping that it doesn't <laughs> turn into a mutant because... That would be really unfortunate with 99, wouldn't it? Oh, that would suck. Well, Dr. Henry, he goes bloody nothing. He's going to be scary, I can already see it. Oh, that's terrifying. Oh, this guy is... Cool. I'm not gonna lie, the Gloom Rock dudes have been super cool lately. Oh, I didn't mean to fire that at him. I'm dead here. There is no way I die. I survived this. He's already taken out all my health. Okay. I have no idea how we counter this <laughs> energy ball situation that he's got going on. But that wasn't too bad of a fight. We did get him down to half health. It was then time for the rematch. Now, I did get him back down to half health, and I was still pretty solid in my terms of health. Uh, we did bring some potions with us because I figured I could heal him between some of his attacks. And then he decided to hit us with this attack. So he sends out shockwaves, and you get pulsed out into the back of the barriers. Thankfully, I had figured out a way to dodge that by using my ultimate, which made us invulnerable. And we were able to pretty much deal damage to him while dodging most of the damage from being knocked back into his, like, uh, 
barrier, I guess you could see. But you can see here, it still stays up, but it was just a matter of hitting him with as much damage as I possibly could at this stage, as that was kind of his, like, ultimate attack. And once we had dodged that, we were pretty much good to go. And just like that, Dr. Henry was killed. Let's fucking go! He's still hitting us with his pulses. Oh my god, that was so close. Did we get him? <laughs> I fucking hope so. Oh, man. So, by defeating Dr. Henry, I had achieved the final research station, which was the Anathema. Now, I just needed to make it. Unfortunately, it needed quite a few resources, but I was still in the process of making scrolls and paper and everything like that. So, the Anathema was kind of expensive, but I needed it in order to get to the final tier of weapons and everything like that that I needed. You can see there, it was quite expensive to make. Now, I wanted to feed my worker Radiant Gruel, which would increase their blood percentage, but it also has a chance of turning them into a mutant. Oh no! Oh, spewing! That was our 99% worker! Oh, I mean, we've still got an 83 one, this was just a chance, but that sucks. Man! Awesome, we've got our new crafting uh, area down, so we just need to grab all our books out of here. We did get quite a few of them. So hopefully we can get some good stuff from this. Blood Moon Gloves, nice, we take those. We got a Sanguine, sanguine Sword. Sanguine Great Sword. Amulet of the Crimson Commander. And Witch Potion. All right, here we go. Harpy Queen around 25 and a half. I don't know how many times we've tried fighting her. I think we're going to stick with the current... Oh, actually, you know what? I think I might change because I think skeletons benefit a little bit more from fighting this chick. Yeah, I definitely think the extra distraction with the skellies is going to be a, a good call, I think. I'm just going to pop this. Because, yeah, I thought that attack was coming and I wanted to make some space. We definitely need to eliminate her little minions first, I think. Let's go! Easy! Got that in the back. I mean, this wasn't our first time. Oops. After defeating the Harpy Queen, it was time to take on Merwin the Elementalist. And boy, oh boy, did she pack a punch. This was literally the first move she used when we fought her. A giant spinning vortex of flaming hell and destruction. So uh, that was comforting. We got our ass handed to us in like a matter of seconds. That didn't stop me. That didn't deter me from going back and facing her again, though. Uh, I didn't really manage to get her to the last stage until now. But she gets much more difficult towards the end. So she not only summons a clone of herself as well, she then fire, spawns in another one of these giant vortex spinning flame balls of death. And it's not even the initial strike of flame that does the most damage. It's the burn effect that happens after as well. That's what just does so much damage to you. And you can see here with her clone, you have to try and kill the clone, obviously. That makes your life a lot easier. But they both fire different spells at you. And you have to try and dodge all of them as well as dealing with the clone. Thankfully, I did have the Sanguine Coil, which healed me when I hit the multiple times on the same target. And I also had my shield, which spawned in more Skelly Boys as well. Completely whiffed that Q attack there. And this Fire Sun of Death and Destruction was super annoying and super hard. She also goes into a form where you have to try and deal damage to her. And she just pretty much heals herself back up. So, she had everything going for her. Unfortunately, that, well, I mean, thankfully, though, these were the final tier of bosses, essentially, before the final boss. I had probably three or four more bosses left to do before we got on to the final boss. Saved my ultimate for the final second. Let's go! Finally, we fucking got her. Oh, my God. She was a pain in the ass. And I've got 19 health left. Oh, the damn fire in this game is brutal. We got her though, finally, it took us freaking ages, but we got her. It was then time to fight Azriel, the Sunbringer. Now, this guy was also an easy fight. Uh, you can see here he's already pretty low. We didn't really have too much trouble killing him. I hadn't actually drunk in any potions or anything like that. You can see my health bar being pretty full. All I really needed for this guy was the Holy Resistance Potion, as he's in a very holy church area that you take damage if you don't have the Holy Potion drunk. But uh, you can see here, he did spawn in a couple of mobs. He also spawned in a couple of these lantern things. But with the shield and my skelly and my sanguine coil, I was able to kill him pretty easily. Like, 
I didn't really have any trouble at all killing this guy. And just like that, he went down. I think that was the easiest fight we've done for the 74 tier. It was actually pretty easy, I reckon. I think it obviously made it heaps easier, the fact that we had the shield of the dam. <laughs> we just soaked literally everything. What did we just get? Demonic gut renders. That sounds terrifying. They're actually pretty super good too. Hits inflicts condemn, weapon attack speed, physical strike chance, and critical strike damage. That's actually super solid. We just have to get the means to make these. Here we go. Terra Claw the Ogre. I don't really know how this is going to go. Doesn't look like he's got many projectiles per se, but he does have a lot of weird attacks, I guess. Where's he going? Okay, so he does have projectiles. <laughs> Good to know. Good thing is he's super massive, so we could hit him pretty easily. Okay. That's definitely one way for him to just absolutely nuke us. Alright, that was uh, something. I mean, we did alright against him. It kind of sucks that I didn't really get a chance to use all of this. It was then time for a rematch, and I managed to do a pretty solid job of getting him down to low, but I was also super low. His ice attacks just absolutely wreck me, and the fact that he's able to bloody dodge that attack at the end there was just super annoying. Thankfully, I was able to dodge his big clapping attack with him being distracted by my skelly boys, and I hoped to summon in more skelly boys, but my explosive shot was able to finish him off. That was a fight and a half. Well, we got him. Those attacks with his waves and his blah, 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 and his ice and his freezing. We got him. Doesn't matter though. Let's go. Woo! On returning to base, I needed some silk to repair my weapons and armor. As you can obviously see there, it is very red, if not broken here. So I needed to kill these spiders to get some silk because I could not be bothered going back out to the cursed forest. And the, uh... Oh, what is it called? I can't remember what the structure is called, but it provides us with the ability to summon in spiders. Alright guys, we can go ahead and pretty much get ourselves a new weapon, so I'm going to go with the greatsword, I think we'll go greatsword, and then I'm going to make that into the sanguine greatsword, which I believe is the highest tier of weapon that we can get, aside from the legendary weapons which are needing to be repaired in the ancestral forge, but we don't have access to do that yet. And there's our sanguine greatsword, 26 damage. Now, I... Probably, I mean, we didn't really have the means to make the upgraded pistols, so I'm fine with that. We're going to put this in there. I don't think I really use the Reaper anymore, unfortunately. Ooh. Yeah, let's go. I like this. And then I've, I've, I've had a play around with this before. I do like the greatsword. It's pretty good. So now that I was on the home stretch of bosses, I spent some time making some jewels for the various skills that I mainly use throughout it. Uh, these were for the Bone Boys, so our shield, our bolts where we fire two skeletons, as well as our Sanguine Coil as well, and our Chaos Bolts. So I spent a little bit of time making up what I could and hopefully augmented some of my skills, which I think would actually help us, obviously, throughout these final bosses. I believe I had three more bosses left to go, and they were the Ghost Yarn boss, the other vampire, and then the final boss. So, I was almost at the end. I'm a pig. It was then time to face Matka the Curse Weaver. Now, she was going to give us the ability to make the Ghost Yarn, which is what I needed to make the final tier of armor. She also spawned in explosive mosquitoes as well as armies of mosquitoes. So, she wasn't the funnest boss, but with my Skelly Boys and my Ultimate and my Sanguine Coil, I was able to defeat her as well as with my Sanguine Greatsword. However, not before she tricked me and decided to go into an impervious state and summon in a bunch of mosquitoes that explode. She didn't go out without a bang though, and I finally managed to take her down, allowing myself to be able to make the final tier of armor. Now, since I was already in the cursed forest, I decided to why not, let's go ahead and see if we can take down Night Marshal Sticks. Now, defeating Night Marshal Sticks would allow us to create 
the legendary weapons as he would give us access to the Onyx tier. Now, as well as that, he would also give us bat form, which is absolutely phenomenal for getting around the map because you essentially turn into a bat and just fly wherever the hell you want. So the first attempt actually went pretty decently. I didn't really know what most of his attacks were or how they worked, but we did get him down to half health. And then he kind of did his little electric gigolo where he jumped up and disappeared for a little bit and he spawned in minions. Now, these minions, holy smackadoodles, they just did so much damage to us. They absolutely clobbered. They were the real damage threat of Night Martial Sticks, to completely honest. Look at how fast they attacked and just how much damage they did. So I was running uh, my Death Knight and my Skelly Boys so that they could obviously provide a little bit of extra aggro away from us. I was also running the Sanguine Greatsword and I popped my ultimate here to try and finish off his little minions as well as deal some extra damage to him, hoping that I could defeat him. Now, it did take me a couple of tries. This attempt here that you're seeing was obviously the final attempt, but me and my Skelly Boys were finally able to defeat him. However, I did go down in the process as well and I wasn't entirely sure whether or not he was still going to be down there. This had only happened once before with the general captain, so I was praying that this guy would still be down and that we could still feed on his V-Blood. It's happened once before where we've downed them as we died and then they stayed down. I think it happened with that armor dude over in Dunley Farm, so I'm hoping he's down. Oh man, those skeletons at the end came in clutch. They dealt so much damage. I think he's down. I have a feeling. Is he down? Nah, he's up. He's not here. Where is he? Oh wait, no, he is down. He is down. Let's go. We got him. Give me a blood, fool. Get out of here, frog. What are you going to do, mate? We've got him. Oh, let's go. we got bat form now. Let's freaking go. Night Marshal Sticks. The Sunder is dead. Alright, cool. We just got ourselves some Blood Moon Gloves, so they're the upgraded version of the Dawnthorn, which is perfect. Uh, increases attack speed. Yeah, so we don't... I think that's the only one we have, but that's fine. Finally, it was time to fight Voltasia the Power Master. Now, Voltasia... Mm, kind of a mixed bag here, to be honest. I did struggle a couple of fights to try and kill her or him. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. But I did struggle to kill her a couple of times. So uh, she gets to the half health mark and she actually creates a clone of herself. And they also spawn in minions as well. So you've kind of got to constantly be on your toes. And they also pop like an electric field barrier in front of them. That prevents projectiles from hitting them. And this big ass lightning beam laser that they shoot out just does a lot of damage. So it was kind of a mixed bag. I, did, I think I died like three or four times against them. But it really, like, they weren't raging juicing like the bloody cursed smith and the freaking forest dude were. They were just kind of difficult. I needed to switch up my strategy a little bit here and there to try and counter them. So I did run the Chaos Volley as well as my uh, damned Shield of the Dam to spawn in the Skelly Boys. Because they did fire, like, a shotgun attack every now and again. You can see it just here. Which allowed me to block that and spawn in the Skelly Boys. So... A good thing about this as well is that you could attack one of the clones as well and technically that would be the damage for both of them, which was great. So any area of effect attacks that you wanted to use would also damage them as well. So you kind of just had to wail on one of them until essentially you killed them. So I did pop my ultimate here to try and finish them off in hopes that they would die. Unfortunately though, they didn't. They were very close to dying though. I did block some of those lightning blocks coming in so that I could spawn in the Skelly Boys. Used a couple of my greatsword skills to get up close and personal so that I could finish them off. And you can see here that one of them jumped behind a barrier. The other one didn't though. And that was the killing blow I needed to finish them off. Thank God for that. With that, I was able to make learn the power cores, which I could use to make gold coins now. Which is going to be great for buying the leftover researchers that I needed from the city. What did we just get from that? Let's go into here. Lightning Curtain. That's pretty sick. That sounds cool in re uh, against like ranged PvPers. And then we got the Power Core and the EMP. Awesome. Oh man. All right, good. So we've only got the final boss. That's it. Solaris the Immaculate. And then we're good to go. 
Alrighty, we are making up some gold coins so that we can go buy some blueprints from the town over in wherever it's called. I don't forget, Silverlight City, is that what it's called all the way over here? Silverlight Hills. Alright, we're going to give this a go. I'm thinking he's by himself. I don't really know. I'm hoping he's by himself. Let's find out here. Yep, alright, he's by himself. We're going to pop all our potions here. If this, this, if this doesn't work, that's fine. We'll uh, we'll come back at another time. But we'll see how we go this time. I have no idea what his attack patterns are. I think I might keep the R and the, the, the same at the moment. I did decide to fight him a little bit earlier because it was a blood moon. So we would get extra blood effects. Which is the main reason why I decided to fight him before actually going into the city and buying any of the research stuff. But I had no idea about any of his attack patterns, so this was a good way to learn them and try and deal with him at the same time. I was so not prepared for all of his attacks. Okay, this guy is very intense. <laughs> he has a lot of abilities, I'm scared. Doesn't help that we're lagging our brains out. Get him, skellies. They're actually doing damage to him. Look at him go. We are taking a bit of damage from him, which is kind of unfortunate. Divine Angel. Okay, this is not filling me with confidence. Alright, I mean, I think for a first try that was pretty good. Kind of unlucky about our rogue blood being wasted there. I kind of should have saved it for the second round. But we are, we did alright against him. I think he's probably just kind of a DPS check thing that we need to do sort of thing. I don't think he's that difficult to be completely honest, but... Obviously, that could change in the second phase. So, let's go give it one more try. We've got no blood type, but eh, we'll see what happens. We've still got the potions, so that's the reason why I wanted to give it a shot. I've got half an hour to give him, try and kill him. We'll see how we go. Spoiler alert! It did not go well. I just wanted to get the full use out of my potions and try and learn more of his attack patterns and see how this fight went and everything like that. And well, as you can see, it, it didn't go that great. I'm pretty sure that this guy was the boss that we died the most on, to be completely honest. And I did get to a point where I actually got him down really low. And then he did this, and he just started healing himself back up. So, we got him super low. You can see here, we got them so low. But, unless I just retreated, ended up going to uh, the city instead and buying a bunch of books with the gold coins that I had made. Figuring that was probably going to be the better deal to do here. So I bought a couple of extra clothing uh, books as well as I believe some extra amulets too. So I took these new research books back to my anathium, anathema, whatever it's called, and learned them up. And you can see here we got quite a few of them. Still we're missing quite a few merciless weapons though. And I needed those in order to get the legendary weapons. However, I did manage to unlock the axes. And with the axes, I had the ability to make a legendary weapon. So, you bet your sweet cheeks, we did exactly that. Here we go, guys. Three Onyx Tears. We can now make ourselves our first ancestral weapon. The Demonic Gut Remnants. Now, these are only one point stronger than our Sanguine Greatsword. However, they do provide us extra benefits. So, you can see there, seven weapon attack speed, critical strike chance, and critical strike damage. We're making them. Now, I do wish we had Merciless uh, Reaper available because we do have a very good Reaper build that we could go for that would allow us to be very spell cast heavy. However, we unfortunately don't have the Merciless Reaper yet. I had then found a 96 Warrior that I wanted to try and get to 100. So, Radiant Gruel, here we come. Oh, come on. We just got rid of our 96 Bloody Warrior for a Mutant Spitter again. That's happened to us twice now. So annoying. I thought we were going to get him. And then it was back to dying some more. Lots of, lots of attempts against the final boss. And I just could not for the life of me 
get him down there. So he had three stages to his fight. Obviously the first stage, then when he gets to half health, he spawns in the angel. And you can see there, the angel almost died, but when you kill the angel, it turns into a fallen angel, and that is how it goes about breaking his shield. You then have an ally for the fight. Now you can currently see my health here is super duper low. All I needed to do now was finish this guy off, except his attacks get a lot more crazier. He spawns in more orbs, he does more damage, he has a larger range of attacks, and I just didn't have a dodge available to dodge these last attacks, and he killed us. Good news was, I was slowly getting better at trying to defeat this guy. But I took a little bit of a breather to go check out the bookstore again, see if there were any blueprints or anything like that that I could buy, so I could fill out my anathema. But unfortunately, there wasn't anything there for me to purchase. Alright, sweet. We just got a new scholar to replace the one that I may have accidentally killed. Let's send her back. 75. I'll take it. I'm happy with that. It's not as high as what we had before, but I mean, there's not much we can do for it. It was then time to face this guy once again. With legendary axes in tow, ice shield available to deal even more damage. I decided to switch it out instead of having it for the skeletons because I don't think he really bothered targeting the skeletons. Yes, they did damage, but I don't think they did that much. So we had gotten him down to stage 3, the Fallen Angel was here assisting us, we just needed to defeat him. My health was low enough, he was spawning in light beams up from above, we luckily had a ranged attack with our axes where we could hurl them from a distance, and I was getting very low. So I jumped out of the arena real quick and decided to heal myself. Now due to the Fallen Angel having the aggro of him, he didn't actually reset. So I was able to regenerate my health. I just had to make sure I got back in there in time before he killed the fallen angel. All right, here we go. I think we're going to get him. We're going to just pop this. Oh God, I just failed that miserably. Doesn't matter, we should be able to get him here. Let's go. We got the final freaking boss. Yeah, that's right, big fella. Not anymore. Solaris the Immaculate is now dead. And with Solaris defeated, I had survived 100 days in the Rising. Now, I could definitely turn this into possibly 150 days. There was a lot of stuff that I didn't do with my castle that I would have liked to have done. I just didn't really have the time to spend fancying it up. Nonetheless, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe down below for more, and I'll catch you in the next one.